right, to set up your first project with Nest Maker, you have for the uh, for the beta, you have just downloaded a zip file uh, of the Nest Maker Pi beta, and when you unzipped it, you got a folder like this. The first thing that I would recommend doing is making a duplicate of this folder. Eventually, what's going to happen is the uh, Nest Maker will create a folder structure like what you see here. Uh, when you go to file new and it will create a file structure for that new project right now However, each one of these folders is a self-contained project So my advice is just copy and paste this and you'll get a duplicate of that and um, If you ever you know this this gives you an empty project to work from in case you want to start over or build another game or whatever if you ever uh, if you forget to do this or you screw this up or whatever don't worry you can always download another version of the nest maker beta and um, and just start from scratch with it with a fresh file uh, but but this is a way to make sure that you always have a fresh file and a, a working file that you're that you're working from so consider this sort of an empty template the one you downloaded uh, and then the game that you're currently working on you can um, just waiting for this to copy it's a lot of little files so it takes a little time and depending on the speed of your computer it may take shorter or longer um, but it, it's not actually a very large file it's just a lot of small files um, <clears throat> so the that's the first thing I would recommend doing is creating a copy and then renaming that copy to the name of the game. I would also stay away from using spaces in your file names. Uh, depending on your operating system, we have not tested it on all operating systems, so I can't intelligently speak to how they all operate, but I know some operating systems do not like spaces in file names. So, Nest Maker Pi Beta, let's call it My Game 1. Okay, and in my game one, you have a basic folder structure that has uh, a bunch of assets that we are providing for you, uh, including um, some HUD assets, some platform tiles, uh, some some uh, basic maze game tiles, some monsters, some player tiles, um, some path tiles, uh, also uh, some music, um, also. Uh, Nest Maker start screen files if you wanted to use them to learn how uh, Nest screen tool and other external tools uh, function with uh, Nest Maker and some behaviors that you can take a look at just to see how um, Nest uh, scripting works um, but you can also look at those in the file these are in case um, you you just wanted to take a look and explore a little bit to see what things do um, okay so Without any delay, uh, you you should be looking at Nest Maker version three point one point four one five nine two six three five three two six five three. Sorry, um, if you're looking at any other version that doesn't start with three point one four, if it's an older version than that, then there's probably a newer version of of the Nest Maker uh, program. Take a look at. Uh, the new 8 for that or if it's a later version there's probably more recent versions of these tutorials so uh, if you double click on nest maker um, it should open up if you have not activated it yet uh, what will happen is this will you won't have any of this stuff here and you'll have a little button here that says activate to activate it all you have to do is get the activation code that we sent to your email if you're not a beta backer you haven't received that yet the full version of the software doesn't arrive until August if you have um, or if you think that you're a beta backer and you haven't received a license code yet let us know uh, and once you get that code you can put in your email uh, that you registered with that activation key and there's a pa there's a place for a password. That password is not something that you've already have. That's something that you are going to generate right now. Um, that way you can activate your license file. For instance, you are activated. You can activate this product on two different computers. But what if you sell your cheap laptop and get a new computer and you want to deactivate it on the laptop and put it on the new computer? Um, having the password will give you login credentials that you'll be able to manage your license. Um, so uh, this is basically the the software that once you hit activate you'll see um, and this we're going to refer to this as the hierarchy or the tree and you see things like the overworld and underworld maps now you don't have to think about these like really the overworld and underworld like Legend of Zelda or something like that nope these are just two different maps these are 512 screens that your game will have access to to use right now for the beta stick to the overworld not all functionality uses the underworld all the data is there but um, right now some of the calls will not tell it to 
uh, update the graphics and things for underworld screens. So you might get some anomalous results until we come back through. Um, you also have a HUD designer, you have your, your graphic assets, you have your monster assets uh, for objects and monsters, you have your color palettes, you have your monster color palettes, you have uh, custom code that you can actually code inside an internal editor, you have your sound which you can play back, uh, the sound effects is a little bit buggy right now as far as playback within the tool but it plays back fine in the actual engine when you play it back. You have text and uh, text strings and text groups. You have your special screens for things like start screen and windscreen. You'll be able to have many more than this with the full version of the software. At right at this point right now, we just have a start screen and a windscreen, uh, aside from the normal game screens. Um, you have your game objects, which are game which are objects that are always loaded for in, like your player object or power ups that he might get on any screen versus monsters, which are more uh, like an NPC or a monster, something that will be changing from screen to screen. Um, as far as what files, what uh, what graphics are actually loaded for that. Um, you have a CHR viewer, which allows you to see CHR files that the NES sees uh, as graphics. Um, if you ever wanted to look at a uh, uh, the actual NES graphic file, you also have a pixel editor, which will allow you to work with BMPs and PNG files uh, and turn them into CHR files that the NES needs in order to operate. And you have an input editor, which uh, allows you to assign these custom scripts that you can create to various buttons in various game states. So that's the basics of the interface and what you have is the hierarchy tree and then you have your work area over here um, and some of these open up as windows. Um, if you look at some of these will open up as windows. Most things open up here in this work area. Uh, if we want to look at the menus we have some pretty basic menu commands like save, load, export. Um, save does not save literally everything because uh, as you say edit graphics you are actually making changes to files in this graphics editor folder. So um, those are being updated as you go. Uh, things that are being saved are like your asset definitions and your monster definitions and things like that uh, and also any changes that you make in the menu. So keep that in mind. Uh, say that it'll also keep track of things like the map um, there are various other ways of exporting things. For instance, your map has a way to export an image of your entire map. Uh, your monsters, you can ex import and export monster data, and uh, that assumes that you have the graphics loaded the same way in a new project, but it'll allow you to upload, uh, import, and export all of the pertinent monster data, such as the animation information or the uh, the, the object information with height, how many hit points it has, uh, and things like that, which you'll look at when we look at that interface. You also have uh, um, a disregard the shop builder right now. The shop builder is, is non-functional right now. Um, you also have info, which is some basic uh, initialization info. You can uh, handle this here or in a script, in a constant script. Um, these mostly have to do with menu options. Uh, some of these uh, were are left over from Mystic Searches and don't quite work in this engine yet as we restructure. Um, triggered screen types do, do work. So you can um, start the game with, uh, there's 256 types of screens that you can have, and you can start that screen as either not triggered or triggered by just clicking one. So this is screen type zero. And if it's red, that means that it's triggered. So this is zero through 15, 16 through 31, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also take a look at uh, labels and this is going to be uh, super helpful. You can actually define tile sets and labels as you'll see them in the tool. This doesn't have much to do with the actual game itself and how it's constructed but it has to do with your own personal organization. So for instance uh, if you have a tile set right by default it is called tile set 00. However I can name it grassland tile set and hit set and now that tile set will be called grassland tile set when I look at it in the editor. So that's a way for you to sort of keep track of things and there's a lot of different types of labels that you can set up um, from tile types to game items to um, monster solid reactions to monster action step flags which this is already outdated so there's already some uh, things that will be changing pretty quick about this as you go through tutorials. Also all the tile sets can be named um, and this is uh, 
this is one of the most uh, important menus if you want to use a different emulator for your testing your game you do have the default emulator that comes with nest maker however we recommend using fceux which is a program that you can download for free if you google fceux and the reason that we recommend fceux is fceux has some great um debugging tools uh, and you can you can set breakpoints you can look at what's going on with the graphics at any given time uh, it's just a more versatile emulator. However, you can use any emulator that that uh, can support Mapper 30. So what you can do in order to set that is you can look for your emulator, which I have my FCUX file in NES stuff in FCUX, and now it's set to open a test file in FCUX. My working folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the ROM file that I want this to open when I hit test, and that's always going to be located in your game engine data folder, and there's the file called game.nest. This is the file that I want the emulator to open when I run, when I test the game. So now it automatically will set the path, and it'll set the, the file. Uh, lastly, script settings. Um, this is going to become, this is brand new and this is very important. Uh, this is going to grow and grow and grow as far as we uh, iterate through and we make this tool more and more refined. You can actually set the scripts that you want to use for the physics, the tile collision, the bounds handling, uh, the sprite drawing. So by default, we have this top down uh, adventure game sort of uh, collision data physics and things that you can load but however we also have inside the script folder a platform uh, physics platform tile collision platform handling of bounds etc and as we build more modules you'll have different choices eventually there will be a way for you to say I'm gonna make a new platform game and it will automatically fill this stuff in for you you can always still make changes to script by script basis but that'll give you the defaults for that type of genre of game so that's a quick look at the interface, the basic interface of this. Um, the last choices, the, the last menu is test menu. Um, if I hit export and test, that's going to take all the data that I have. It's going to run it through an ASM6 assembler, um, and then it's going to open it in whatever emulator that you have chosen. If you haven't chosen an emulator, it's going to open it in uh, the custom emulator, the emulator that Shiru just developed for us way back about three years ago. Um, so if there was a problem compiling, this is where it would tell you that there's a problem. One of the most common problems you might see is something where the assigned banks is overflowing. And it would say that uh, something is out of, out of range in assigned banks. And that means that you've stuffed too much data into a single bank. And we'll talk about how you can be testing that as you go and how you could uh, back that up and, and, and make sure that, and eventually we're gonna have a tool that is sort of checking, you can check the bank load as you go. Um, so when I hit any key, it's now open my game. Now, I don't have any game to show, so it's just a blank gray screen and there's absolutely nothing I can do, but it is my Nest ROM file opened in FCUX, as I said it. The other things that you can do here is if you just export, uh, it won't open up to test, and there might be reasons that you would want to do that. For instance, um, if you just want to export and check the output uh, without actually playing the game, uh, for something wasn't working and you just wanted to check the output, you can just export without it having opening in the emulator. There's also a retest last export, which is you know it's basically just compiles the last version without compiling the data through the assembler. And lastly, there's make cart. If you have your cart flasher plugged in. Uh, your your Kazoo Cart Flasher and it is tested and it is up to date uh, with with its driver files. You can hit the Make Cart button and it will it will export and test and it will take everything that you've done and export it to a cartridge that will then be playable on an actual Nintendo Entertainment System or any clone system. So that's a quick look at the interface and what we're going to be talking about over the course of this tutorial series. And we're going to jump right in and I'm going to go sort of section by section and show you what each section does. So uh, if you haven't, as I was showing you, please make sure that your emulator is set to FCUX, download FCUX, um, and that your working folder is pointing to the ROM file uh, in your folder.